Yum. Yes, bread. Fresh, baked, warm bread sitting on the kitchen counter, filling my house with beckoning smells, inviting me to sneak in and tear off a piece to dip into my mother's homemade sauce. Sauce that had been simmering on the stove all day. That's what bread means to me. Sunday's warmth, family, shelter, love, comfort. Bread is my happy home. When my mother was healthy, before she had cancer, when she was cooking, sharing, smiling, alive, visible, here. Nanotechnology, yum? No. Nanotechnology is the invisible technology. And my cell phone, my camera, my laptop, my sunscreen, my outdoor clothing, yes, it is all around me, but invisible, intangible. Until last spring, I taught a design class at the newly merged SUNY Poly on visualizing nanotechnology. It was the first class related to nanotech, and it was a success. Students translated complex, invisible nanoconcepts into user-friendly infographics. They, they ranged from um, nanotech digital image sensors and digital cameras to water-repellent nanotextiles in swimwear. One that hit home was attacking cancer, nanomeds and cancer treatment. It was bittersweet. Something a student made so visible brought me back to seeing someone fade away, become invisible. But it also brought me back to those happy Sundays at home, growing up with fresh bread and sauce, breaking bread with family and friends, connecting sharing. So what do bread and nanotechnology have in common when one is visible and the other invisible? One is tradition and the other technology. One is so simple, flour, water, salt, yeast. And the other is so complex that there are billion dollar centers of research being built around it right here in Utica. Well, they both need dough, yes? <laughs> yes. But that's not it. Utica's identity, our identity, has always been tied to industrialization. The New York State Canal System put Utica on the tech map in the 1800s. Right in our backyard, the middle section of the Erie Canal was the first portion to open in 1820. It led to our first manufacturing industries, flour mills, sawmills, and eventually the Mohawk Valley became the center of the U.S. textile industry. What was behind industry, progress, and new technology? People. The people of Utica supported our tech growth with hard work, tradition, family, and a rich, unique culture, including food. By the late 1800s, we had a large wave of immigrants settling in Utica. We have and continue to be built on diversity, and embracing our refugee population is essential to our success. We are known as the second chance city and the town that loves refugees, reflecting the crucial role that immigrants have and continue to play in our city success. In mid-20th century Utica, the 1950s were known as the loom to boom era. We became the major radio manufacturing center for GE, employing over 8,000 workers right here in Utica. Radio technology was getting smaller in size, but bigger in popularity. We were known as the radio capital of the world. People opened new businesses to support our growing city. Utica's cultural life 
boomed along with its manufacturing. Hotels, museums, theaters, restaurants, and our very own Utica Club blossomed in downtown Utica. What was behind, what was this force behind growth and change? Technology. But technology without tradition lacks the human element. Tradition without technology lacks progress. Utica's identity has and continues to be a where we've been and where we're going identity. By the mid-70s, GE had moved its manufacturing to the Far East. We continued to have successful local tech companies, ConMed, Indium, Northland, Partech, but like many other industrial cities in the U.S., we were coined part of the U.S. Rust Belt. What's next? Nano Utica, say goodbye to that Rust Belt rep. We're going to rebrand this negative identity, this time moving forward into the info age through the Nano Corridor. Once again, Utica is at the center of upstate New York's advancements. Last year, our governor announced big dough coming our way, one and a half billion being invested by six global tech companies to create Nano Utica, our state's second major hub of nanotech research and development. Through a public-private partnership and the merger of two SUNY schools, SUNY Albany's College of Nano and our own SUNY IT, it promised to create more than 1,000 high-tech jobs right here in Utica on SUNY IT's campus at a world-class nano facility. And this is not just a what if, it's happening, it's being built. And with a brand spanking new world-class nano facility and a SUNY merger, we get a new name. Recently, SUNY Polytechnic was approved. With a new name comes a new logo, a new identity. A colleague of, at my, of mine at SUNY IT, Professor Confer, shared his idea for generative logo design. It was intriguing, so different than traditional static identity design. It, educational communities, by nature, grow, change, look to the future. What about a logo that changes? His idea was based on a 16-unit grid and through an algorithm produced more than 54,000 variations of this logo, creating a unique identity for every member of the SUNY Poly community. From his sketches, to my refinements, to forward-thinking tech institutes, we look to MIT to get a sense of how generative logo design works. To quote their designers, an algorithm is created, and through a custom web interface, each individual member goes to the website, chooses and claims elements, and then uses it on their letterhead, their website, their business card. While generative logo design is not right for every project, it could be the perfect solution for the new SUNY merger, for the people of the merger, that collectively look to the future. Our individuals come from different backgrounds, but work together, grow together, share ideas together break bread together. So, now we're back to bread. Every civilization has grown grain and made bread. It is one of humanity's oldest foods. And our earliest identity makers, the ancient Egyptians, believed the pleasures of life were made immortal by painting scenes on caves and tombs over 4,000 years ago. They chose bread as a common theme. It is very symbolic. To break bread is to make peace, to show love, to share wealth. It's a bond, a deep social connection. To break bread is to trust someone. It's casual and friendly. It's welcoming and warm. It's sneaking in the kitchen on a Sunday to tear off a fresh baked piece to dip into your mother's homemade sauce. Eating in Utica has always been a huge cultural event. We are known for our rich food culture and our chicken riggies. 
<laughs> My husband's grandfather, Mike DeCuffa, and his brothers owned a bakery down on Bleecker Street in the mid-1900s. Not only was this bakery family-owned, but it was at the heart of Utica's commercial district, and it literally fed many local businesses with wholesale, fresh, local baked goods. It was also at the core of Utica's identity, family, food, tradition, hard work. Born to a family of European immigrants to picking beans in Hamilton, New York, to owning a successful business in downtown Utica, it was a story shared by many of that time. Now bread has come full circle. Two young local families, much like the Decafas, want to bring back the past with an old world style European artisan bakery. While the Decafas were Europeans baking bread in Utica, these Uticans want to reinvent bread in our area, whole and local, fresh and creative, highlighting upstate New York's productive and progressive Mohawk Valley. Similar to the other identity project, SUNY Poly, new name, new building, new logo. A new bakery needs a new name, but this time an old building, given a second chance, brought back to life in downtown Utica with a new identity. The families chose Utica Bread for their name. And when asked why, they say they are happy they are in Utica, part of Utica, growing with Utica, staying in Utica. After the name came some ideas for the logo. One looked back to the past, traditional transportation, time when we would ride our bike to a local bakery, buy bread, and carry it home in our basket to break with friends and family, connecting, sharing, but always pedaling forward, growing, looking to the future. Similar to SUNY Polly, again, the logo hasn't been decided on yet, but what has been is the collective vision and identity of Utica. Looking forward, moving forward, growing with brand new business and restoration projects. Tapping into our strengths that unite and connect and celebrate our differences. Utica's identity, our identity, is changing. And it's visible with real urban renewal projects. Old buildings coming down along our major highway. Old buildings that blocked and divided, making space for, a dr for dreams of a new Utica with pedestrian bridges, green spaces, and bike paths. Possibly for riding to a local downtown bakery to break bread with friends. And this dream is not just a what if. It's happening. Bridges are being built. Bridges that physically bring together disconnected areas of the past, but look to the future through new relationships and mergers in our community. Bridges that give So, what do bread and nanotechnology have in common? Utica. People. The people of Utica growing together. We are at a crossroads, tradition and technology. But people are at the intersection of past and future, bread and nano. People are the bridge that will support our nanotech growth by reinventing traditional business and connecting them, looking to the future with them.
They say Utica is like the Wild West, a perfect place to stake your ground and build something filled with low-hanging fruit and not much competition, wide open spaces, empty buildings waiting to be given a second chance. If you have a dream of something you've always wanted to start or be part of, now is the time to do it. Like the traditional bread identity, how can you pedal forward with something in your basket to create, reinvent, and share with others? But like the nanotech generative logo, how can you adapt, change, and recreate your individual identity while being part of a greater community vision? Utica's identity, our identity, is who we are now and where we're going. how we remember when we were, while also dreaming of what we will be. It's breaking bread with nanotechnology. Thanks for listening.